All right? So the last test we're going to have, so we have this polynomial. And I want to show you a couple things before we actually get to our problem. All right? So we, we talked about the rational zero test. And I said there's one more test that we can learn about. The other test is what we call Descartes rule of signs. Okay, so Descartes' rule of signs. And what Descartes' rule of signs says is it doesn't tell you what the possible zeros are, all right? All it says is it tel helps tell you how many zeros you have. But it's not going to be just talking about rational, it's only going to be dealing with real, okay? And it's going to be dealing with positive and negative. So we can use the rational zero test to tell us how many rational numbers we have. And we can talk about Descartes' rule of signs to tell us how many um, positive and negative real zeros we have. So Descartes' rule of signs, rather than kind of writing up the long description, what we're going to say is the, the number of positive real zeros, all right? So the number of positive real zeros is going to be the equal to the number of sign changes of your polynomial in standard form. So the number of sign changes and, as a, and then um, down as a factor 2. So it is equal to, all right, I'm elaborating. So it's the number of positive real zeros is going to be equal to the number of sign changes of your polynomial. Okay, then, and then minus a factor of two. And this isn't, or possible, okay? I'm going to kind of explain. It's probably better for me to explain it than actually to write it in there. So what I mean, let's go and look at the number of sign changes. This is a positive to a positive. So did we change signs? No. We went from a positive to a negative. Did we change signs? Yes. So we have 1. That means we're going to have one positive real 0. Then we go again, negative to a negative. Did we change signs? No. Then we go to negative to positive. So now we have two real zeros. All right? So the number of positive real zeros in this case is 2 or 0. Where did it get 0 from? What I mean is minus a factor of 2. Minus 2 or 4 or 6 or 8. So if we had, let's say we had 10 sign changes, right? That means you'd have 10, 10 positive real zeros, or you'd have 8, or you'd have 6, or you'd have 4, or you'd have 2, or you'd have 0. So in this case, so what you do is you find the number of, pos you find the number of sign changes, which we have 2. And then you subtract a factor of 2. So it's either 2 positive real zeros or 0 positive real zeros. So if you have 0 positive real zeros, what else could you have? Negative. You could have negatives or you could have complex, right? Yeah. Yes. So let's go and look at how do you find out the number of negative? So the number of negative real zeros, all right? What we're going to do now is plug in f of negative x. So to plug in f of negative x, we now have 4 negative x raised to the fifth plus negative x raised to the fourth minus 2 negative x raised to the third minus 5 negative x squared plus 8 negative x plus 16. So what we do is now we figure out what is f of negative x. So a negative, any negative number raised to an odd power is always going to continue to be negative, right? Any negative number raised, or any positive or negative number raised to an even power will always be positive. So Negative x to the fifth is now negative x to the fifth times 4. So now I have a negative 4 x to the fifth minus x to the fourth plus, nope, yep, 
plus, no, that becomes positive, I'm sorry. Negative x to the fourth is positive x to the fourth, right? Then this one becomes, that's still negative, so that's now positive, 2x cubed. This becomes positive, so this will now still remain a negative 5x squared. This is now negative. Why wouldn't you use positive 5x squared? Well, because, remember, x, negative x squared is positive x squared, right? Uh, so positive x squared times negative 5. So now it's going to be the same thing. I'm not going to rewrite it for time purposes, but it's going to be the number of sign changes minus a factor of 2. So that works for here as well. So let's count how many we have. We have 1, 2, 3. So therefore, the number of, pos or number of negative real zeros is going to be either 3 or 1. Because remember, I said you have to subtract a factor of 2. So 3 minus 2 is 1. All right? So it could be 3. You could have 3 negative zeros. Or I'm sorry, you have 3 negative zeros. Or you could have 1 negative real zero. But it's going to be one or the other. OK? Cool? Questions? No? OK. Can you take the biggest? Oh, it's going to be OK.